Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Integrity Matters by Turnitin. With me in the house today is Professor Anthony Withy of the Australian Catholic University. Anthony, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a little bit about your background and how your role at the university influences academic integrity, everything um, learning and teaching, particularly um, education technology? Yeah, thanks, Chooks. Look, um, my role at Australian Catholic University is director of what we call the Centre for Education and Innovation. And our role in there, we have academic developers, learning designers, academic skills unit, we have data analytics team. But more importantly, recently in the last 18 months, we've got in our team an academic integrity unit. So that academic integrity unit actually looks at all the different academic integrity issues across the university and actually works with faculties to administer some of that work with the student responses in that particular space. And so now we've got a dedicated unit that takes a bit of that legwork um, from an administration point of view, but also sets the tone for policies and procedures in students with academic integrity, as well as in some learning and teaching and assessment issues as well. Well, it sounds like you wear a lot of hats at the university. <laughs> so yeah, big ups to you there. Um, talking about the university and the need for students uh, meeting learning outcomes. Um, can you talk to us about your institution's strategy around assessments, especially with the need to uh, for students to meet those learning outcomes? Yeah, like I think what's really interesting at the moment, that's been the, the big ticket item that's really since last November that's been, you know, on everyone's lips. So for us, we look at three main things around the assessment and the learning outcomes. We've got really good what we call academic developers. They work really well with their academic colleagues about how to write learning outcomes and how to link them with the learning and teaching strategy and how to link them with the assessments as that constructive alignment narrative piece that we try to do. But what's been coming across more now, especially with the academic integrity issues, is the notion of authentic assessment. What we would say straight away what we work on is relationships with students. Mm. So we talk about authentic assessment rather than just the design, the relationship and knowing your students. That's the first thing. I think the second thing we look at too is staff capability in that particular space. So I think the next piece that we're really all working on is really ensuring that staff have really good capability on assessment design, mm. have a good understanding of it, and really use the dance between formative and summative assessment really well. If you can really, um, instill good formative assessments, you build the relationships with your students, you get to know where they're at. And so I think when the summative assessment pieces come in, you've probably got a better chance for identifying issues around academic integrity AI because you've built that relationship. But then you've got to be able to do that on scale. Because mm. when you've got a small group that's doable, but when you've got 3,000 students yeah. year and 15 session staff, it sounds great, but it's harder to implement. Yeah, you talked about something that's, uh, that brings us into today's conversation, artificial intelligence that happened in November with chat GPT launching. Um, for your institutions, what are the top priorities for tackling this challenge? And most importantly, how is academic integrity going to be impacted? Yeah, complex. Uh, I think um, the, the teacher of the year as well, um, Associate Professor Wang, I think brought up really well yesterday where we've got to really focus on the bandwidth of our current teaching academics. So they've had two and a half, three years of just being completely overwhelmed, survival mentality, trying to get through. They've just got out the other side and now they've been hit with chat GPT. So first of all, what we need to do is make sure we support them along that continuum. Mm. Some are going to be quite fearful, which is fair enough. Some are going to be really excited and want to create. So we as an institution, the first thing we have to do is acknowledge that different disciplines, different staff will be on that continuum mm. and we've got to support them on that journey, you know, as a starting point. Mm. Um, so that, that's the first thing. The other piece I would say as well is having, not being fearful of it, but being curious. Um, and so first of all, what we've done is we've really looked at updating our student policies um, with academic integrity to include AI, AI in there and sending a statement out to staff and to the um, incoming students to be clear about where our current position is at. Mm. But then we've got to think short term, medium, long term, and we've got to try to manage that all in one hit. So I would say it is quite overwhelming at the moment in the sense of there's a lot of people across the university that are involved and want to be involved. 
um, and you want to bring them in, but you've also got to have a consistent message going out. Mm. I'm going to piggyback on yep. um, what you said there, fearful not being curious. Um, can you talk to us about the institutional sentiment? Maybe some you most likely would have heard from some academics or educators about oh, this, this, or what their reactions are with um, um, AI on the rise and particularly what their concerns would be around things like assessment and academic integrity. Yeah. And I think that's where we had that continual response. We've got some of our academics rightly say that almost feel like, gosh, I just, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. My assessments aren't going to be worth anything. So we're all back to square one. This is what's a waste of time. And that, that's a normal response, I think, to something like this. Um, but then we've got those other, like other areas of disciplines that are going, right, we can use this, we can create this, we can do this. So I guess that's what, what I meant about that continuum. Now, mm -hmm. what I would say is, personally, I, I never want to go back to whence we came. I would like to be saying, okay, what things do we keep that we know are gonna be in, integral in the next 10 years, mm -hmm. but what stuff do we need to continue to let go of and not use this as a time to fall back on what we're just really comfortable with, mm. um, because I think that's could be mm. not burying our heads in the sand, but trying to look for safety when that might mean we miss out on opportunities. You talked a little bit about um, just continuing on the, on the sentiment. Do you feel, and you can also share your views, and uh, maybe that of um, your colleagues you're hearing, do you feel there would be a call for a return back to paper? paper assessment and what does that mean? Yeah, and I think there's there's probably going to be a lot of that in the space. I think that's what I mentioned the word, like where we're most comfortable. Mm. So when these things happen in general, mm. as humans, we like to get comfortable as quickly as possible. We don't like being areas of uncertainty. Mm. Um, so I think this space is quite challenging at the moment because it's changing so rapidly that we can't find that safe ground. So I think there's always going to be an area of, of every university where academics or people are going to want to go back to the paper-based exams because, okay, we, we, we can't, AI can't impact that bit. Great, so we're safe. Mm. But then, like I said to you, the, the danger of that is that we, we, we fall behind where it's going because this technology is not going to go backwards, it's going to keep going forward. But I think there might be, again, that sort of combination of finding some safety when we can move forward. Um, so I know for us at, at ACU, we, we currently use a lot of online you know, examinations and there's some good aspects of that. There's some tweaks with staff and student experience we're working through. Um, we're currently in the stage working with our academic community about that exact same question. Um, so we've even got meetings coming up in the next couple of weeks about the future direction of examination. So it's, it's an ongoing discussion. With the many discussions that are happening and like you said, are gonna be happening um, looking at the future of assessment, where does the detection of um, AI written work um, standing and maybe AC's strategy for education. Yeah, and I think it's a really good point. When you say our strategy for education, that's really good because we actually have an education strategy. So we developed that 2020, 2021, um, and it's got really, really four pillars around that. So a lot of our decisions are based on that strategy, which is great. So we've got that until 2023. Now, decisions around that space around detection, um, we've got you know, different technology that can detect, mm. but we've got to be confident around um, student, you know, student identity, student profile, um, you know, protecting the student's, you know, identity as well. So I think we're in the early stages of investigating all that technology, but ensuring student privacy. And if I think the student privacy can be, you know, insured, then those detection sites can work really well. Mm. But if they don't, then we at the moment would not be directing staff to use that unless we've got the student privacy bit locked away. So yeah, that's yeah. how I would answer that right You're today. safely responding to my next question. I was gonna talk about um, what are some ethical concerns with regards to privacy, confidentiality, uh, confidentiality as we're navigating this space. Um, so I'm just gonna move on to um, my next question with regards to the assessment space. What types of assessments do you I was going to say portend, but that's that's if you've got a, wa a wand. Um, but in this case, what type of um, assessments would be impacted 
by this um, the influx of AI? Oh, I mean, many of the traditional essay type, you know, questions are going to be impacted. And, but I think that's where, well, potentially could be impacted. I think that's where we've got to look at the relationship piece I mentioned earlier. I'd say that is the real critical piece about the relationship between staff and students, um, utilising formative assessment to summative assessment. But I'll probably bring up, you know, a, a bigger issue that sort of transcends all of that, mm. and that's time for staff. So we all have different um, workload policies, and I think they're you know, a, a part of you know, university and higher education. But if we don't give staff enough time for assessment uh, as, a, as time, whatever that might be, creating, marking, grading, whatever it might be, then if we don't start looking at that space with a really you know, strong look, then I think we're not going to give the staff the time and capability they need. And I see that is probably our biggest thing as institutions, but there's a cost associated with that. So again, it's easy to say we should give more time, but you know, where do we take time off or how does that work? Mm -hmm. But I think when you talk about designing assessment, staff need the headspace and the time for that. Yes, this is true. So I would say that's your first bit, they mm -hmm. need enough time. The second bit, we use the term, you know, authentic assessments. And you know, again, that's, that's, really, in, that's really essential. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's about the relationship. So how do we utilise formative assessment? So if we use formative assessment early on in creating pieces that students might write early on so we can see where their writing's at, that might be a way that we build a relationship where staff can see, hang on, you wrote this in week two, I saw you write this. Mm. This was where your writing's at. Suddenly in week four, your writing's <laughs> here. Now that's, I know that's not scalable, I, I get all that, but I'm yeah. just, we're just looking at relationship building as a, as a, you know, as a, I guess, a way of looking at this issue. Hmm. I think you share on, on, on a very unique piece there with what we're experiencing in the educational space, the need to still have that staff student or educator student relationship, which is, which is pivotal to how we learn. Um, now, as we wrap up um, today's conversation, I wanted to get your thoughts on, um, I'm sure you know, everyone knows about TEXA, um, the, te the Tertiary Educa Education Quality and Standards Agency. Um, we had um, Helen Guineal, Dr. Helen Guineal, uh, make a statement um, a couple of weeks ago now. And I'm just going to, I just want to get your thoughts on what you think about that statement, because um, while I'm hearing the positive intent behind how we should approach AI potentially. Um, there are some concerns around that as well. So I'm just getting um, people's thoughts around this. So the statement is, um, she said, while some institutions are banning AI through their institutional policies, um, the long-term response to open source AI tools would need to be more sophisticated than just banning them. What are your thoughts around that? Oh, I think it's a concept um, that makes perfect sense. What we'd probably like to see in higher education is a bit more scaffolding and around how we might achieve that. So I think if there was some uh, to the learning and teaching concept around scaffolding, I think if we were scaffolding that statement around how that might look and how we might traverse through that space, I think that's a really helpful statement. I think in isolation, it's not as, it's, we probably would like a bit more direction um, in that space. So we've got a bit more to work with. But I think the notion of banning that, you know, again, I can understand different institutions, you know, looking at that. Um, again, I think the problem with that is you're not really engaging in the space and, and working there. So what I would say as well, it's really time for the sector to work together. I think more so than ever. So, you know, we're already, we're already looking at working with other universities in this space. So, um, you know, to mention other, you know, really good research universities in learning and teaching, Deakin University in Cradle, and the research in that space is, is top notch. We're already engaging in seminars from them. So we're engaging that space heavily. We're not trying to pretend to try to do it all ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking with the sector and within to come up with really good sort of, you know, policies and projects moving forward. So um, collaboration is essential. Yes. So I think that's a really nice way to put today's um, conversation to an end, um, talking collaboration and thinking forward um, instead of going backwards. Um, I want to say a big thank you to um, Professor Anthony Wheaty of the Australian Catholic University for sharing his insights and perspectives on how AI may or may not be shaping the educational sector. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Jeff. Cheers.